Singapore, Dubai, so Monaco are probably the three best places for most high net wealth individuals, especially if you have got active income. What are the four best places for high net wealth individuals to live in in 2024? Now, before doing that, go to adamfire.com, especially if you're an expat or a high net wealth individual, and see how I can help you. Part of helping high net wealth individuals, and indeed expats, is knowing where to go and where to move to. Now, obviously, everyone's situation is completely different. So I'm not gonna say this video is for everyone's situation. And likewise, things do change dramatically. If I was making this video five years ago, my suggestions would have been different to now. Likewise, if you're watching this video in 2027, a few things might have changed. Nevertheless, I'm gonna come off the fence and speak about the four places I think are the best for high net wealth individuals. And the fourth place is gonna really surprise you. I would more say this is a three plus one video. In other words, the three best places for high net wealth individuals and maybe one place at the end, which is a bit surprising, and maybe only for a minority of people. So first of all, let's talk about the criteria that I'm looking for here. I'm looking for places where the taxes are low, not just for unearned income, but also earned income, uh, all kinds of income, basically, all kinds of capital gains and so on. But in addition to that, I'm looking at places that have a high quality of living. I'm not talking about places like maybe some of the Caribbean islands where, you know, taxes are very low, the beaches are beautiful, but there isn't a lot to do in some cases. I'm talking about places which are safe, uh, low tax for all kinds of income. And in addition to that, there's plenty of things to do. So with that in mind, I would say number one, in no particular order necessarily, but number one, I would say Dubai and the UAE more generally. And the reason for that is, these days, Dubai and the UAE are not as strict as before. And there's plenty of things to do uh, in Dubai, no matter what you want to do, whether it's go to the beach, go to the mountain, whether that's uh, watching pop concerts, whatever you like to do, there are things to do in Dubai. And also very importantly for say online business owners, it has the perfect time zone if you need to make calls or travel for that matter. So if you're traveling to the Far East, or Europe or Africa, pretty much everywhere apart from the Americas, Dubai has an ideal location for you if that's what you like to do, if you're calling a lot of people in different time zones, if you're traveling a lot. Following on from that though, I would place Singapore as number two. The reason I would put Singapore slightly below Dubai is it's not perfect in terms of time zones. It is perfect if your business is in the Far East and Australia it's not quite as good as Dubai when it comes to time zones globally. In addition to that, it's much harder to get in now uh, from a visa point of view and sponsoring yourself. And also there's been a big influx of wealthy people coming in to Singapore in the last few years, just like Dubai, but the difference is Singapore has less space. So the cost of living now in Singapore on average is higher than Dubai. And in addition to that, taxes on average, even though they're relatively low, are higher. The safety is about the same. But Singapore, like Dubai, does have a lot of things going on. And people often forget this. So a lot of people who don't know that much about some offshore locations assume uh, places like Singapore, Dubai don't have much going on, culturally speaking. But that's just not true. So, for example, when I was with uh, some of my team uh, a few weeks ago in Malaysia, one of them says that basically whenever she wants to go to a pop concert, she goes to Singapore because Singapore has more pop concerts going on uh, compared to Malaysia. Now, you might say you're not into pop concerts, but the point is not pop concerts. It's more that where you're into art galleries, pop concerts, where you're into events, Singapore, like Dubai, has a lot going on. So therefore, I would definitely put Singapore in the top three. And the third, I would say, is Monaco. Now, Monaco is the traditional old wealth place. It is losing some of its luster at the moment. Plenty of people from Monaco are going to Dubai and beyond. However, Monaco still has a lot of things going for it. But against that, I would say how small the place is and how much that influences the cost of things like housing has to go against it. Because in a place like Dubai, people can afford villas quite easily. You don't have to even be super rich. Whereas in Monaco, if you're even a billionaire, 
often you're living in an apartment. That's a huge difference. So those are the top three places I would say for high net wealth individuals. Now, obviously though, it does depend on your situation. If you're a high net wealth individual who has, for example, sold your business and you don't have active income, you might decide to somewhere in Europe like Spain or Portugal or a place that is quite low in terms of taxes on unearned income um, and always things like dividends and capital gains, you might decide to go that route. So for example, Italy also has a flat tax regime of 100,000 euros a year and many countries in Europe have uh, tax carve outs especially if you're not in a situation where you've got a home office or you've got active income, you've got income tax and, and things like that. So for people who have sold their business and they just want like a quieter way of life, maybe they're semi-retired, you could argue many places in Europe are better. However, a fourth place you might want to consider is actually Hong Kong, because Hong Kong it's lost a lot of its luster in recent years. Hong Kong used to be the place to go for high net wealth individuals in Asia, but recently there's been a lot of issues in Hong Kong. And it's true that come 2049, there's a lot of uncertainty, will it become like mainland China and so on. But I was back in Hong Kong a few months ago and I still think it's a great city. They're also bringing out more schemes to attract high net wealth individuals as well. They used to have schemes that were closed down, but now they've actually opened them again. And I think the reason for this is now there are fewer high net wealth individuals in Hong Kong than before. So they're actually trying to attract people back in. So Hong Kong, in a way, is actually like a place, a bit like buying a stock or a stock market that's gone down in price. Hong Kong, maybe for some people, could be attractive again. But that kind of leads me to a wider point on this video. And that's that a lot of those places that traditionally attracted a lot of high net wealth individuals, like the UK with the non-DOM scheme, uh, for example, like Hong Kong, are less attractive than before. Places like Dubai have become more attractive. However, that does not mean necessarily that you should not look at those traditional places like Hong Kong, because now, you know, things have changed compared to a few years ago, and things continue to change. So now Hong Kong is cheaper than before. Now it's easier than before to get in compared to five years ago on some of those investor visas and so on. So the point is, always remember that things change. If we did this video again in 2026 or 2027, things might change again at that point. Look at the UK, they've just closed down a non-DOM scheme and many countries will do something similar and other countries will bring in new schemes. So basically in conclusion, I would say on this video that Singapore, Dubai and so Monaco are probably the three best places for most high net wealth individuals, especially if you have got active income. Hong Kong could be in a fourth uh, place on that so-called podium, in my view. However, if you don't have active income, for example, you're a retiree or you're someone who sold your business or you're living off dividends, then yes, maybe consider some places in Europe or for that matter, even the US. People forget the US has a lot of legal tax deductions as well for both Americans and non-Americans who go to live in the US. That does depend on the state you're living in. And obviously nothing I say here is formal tax advice or formal legal advice, but you get the point I'm making. It does depend on the situation you're in and where your income is sourced.